On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, how effective is the Ukraine Grain Corridor? Hi, I'm your host, Sam Cagliano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so be alerted about new videos as they come out. So the other day I posted a video regarding Ukraine grain versus Russian grain. And this was in response to a lot of media reports that have been really lauding how much grain has been coming out of Ukraine without really being specific about it. And at the same time, a lot of talk about what happens if Russia jeopardizes this deal. That video, <coughs> excuse me, available right above. You can go ahead and check it out if you want to. But I thought today I'd go in and talk about the exact statistics and information. More importantly, give you the resources you can go to directly to see if you, what exactly is happening regarding Ukraine grain. So before we jump into this, if you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's jump into the sources. So first we head over to marine traffic and take a look at what exactly is flowing out of Ukraine, the Gulf of Odessa, and versus what's coming out of Russia. And a, a lot of people are looking at marine traffic, making these 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 statements, and I, I think a lot of them don't understand what they see at times. Anyway, what you'll see right now is no traffic moving through the Gulf of Odessa right now. There are ships up at the three major ports up here that are being serviced by this, this clump of three right up here, uh, Odessa, and then two subports, one to the south and one to the northeast that they're using. And you'll see here a series of ships anchored off waiting either to get in, as you see these, these ships are, are basically waiting to get in and load or to head out and run the uh, gauntlet through the passage out of the area. Meanwhile, the Russians, the gates are wide open. Uh, ships are coming from the interior of Russia to Rostov on the Don and then sailing through the Sea of Azov to the Kerch Straits where they're being loaded. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know why I'm coughing here today. Uh, loading on board a variety of different vessels for exit out of the Black Sea along with the port of Novorisk being used and a couple of things to know before we jump into the resources number one uh attacks this story over on lloyd's list by uh bridget uh Dykin, uh does a great job uh bridget is kind of a a vessel tracker for lloyd's uh she does a fantastic job uh, always with great stories but she notes here about attacks that have taken place and after months without confirmed strikes Ukrainian forces allegedly carried two major attacks in June, and that's the last time that we've seen attacks. She puts out here that there are a total of 17 civilian ships that have been attacked since Russia invaded Ukraine. And she goes into great detail talking about it, a really great source here to provide you the, uh, the information. And what's interesting that most people don't know is that at the very beginning of the war, both sides initiated attacks so that within the first three days of fighting, Russian missiles and, and rockets hit four different vessels. Uh, Namora Queen, Millennial Spirit, we saw those right at the very beginning uh, getting hit. And a, a couple other ships were hit, but the, also two Russian flag vessels were hit in the first days. And then subsequent attacks were carried out on other Russian vessels. This is one of the reasons why we saw for a long time the ships transiting the Sea of Azov here they turned off their AIS because they had to run this gauntlet here past Mariupol and Berdansk. And it's one of the reasons the Russians spent so much time neutralizing Mariupol. Now that they control the entire coast of the Sea of Azov, they can run without any problem. So their AIS is firing away. Uh, it goes on here. Only five war losses and damage reports have been recorded since May. The last attack was carried out by the Russians on june 1st ukrainian forces have allegedly re responsible for two most recent attacks which took place on june 17th and the 20 and this involves the firing of harpoon missiles against a uh, russian uh, tugboat uh, and then another one against the drill platforms off the area it goes down here at the very end there have been a series of apparent ukrainian attacks on crimea recently potentially signaling the beginning of a country's counteroffensive. Overall, Russia is allegedly responsible for 12 attacks on civilian ships, which have resulted in deaths, uh, and Ukraine 5, which also has resulted in deaths. This subsequent story, also by Bridget, talks about the bumper uh, inquiries to shift Ukraine grain. 
uh, the Ukraine government will ask the UN to include the port of Mikolev in the initiative, while Russia casts doubts on the extension of the existing agreement. Mikolev up here is pretty far north, and the Russians are right here in Kyrgyzstan, this area, but more importantly, the Russians control part of this peninsula right here. So ships coming down here will be sailing right past Russian positions here. So not exactly sure that's going to happen. Uh, this piece by Bridget goes in some great detail. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to show you is where she pulled her source material from. So when you want to go get the best source on this, or at least the most information source on it, you want to go over here, United Nations, their web page here on the Black Sea Grain Initiative. And this is the site for the Joint Coordination Center. Uh, this includes the initial statement by the Secretary General and the signing agreement that allowed and brokered this deal. But the most important thing here is these tabs right here. So this takes you over to the Joint Operations Center. And the Joint Operations Center, which was set up in Est Istanbul on 27 July, is the one responsible for brokering this deal between Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, and the United Nations. Has their main responsibilities here. They will monitor the movement of commercial vessels, ensure compliance, report on sh uh, shipments, inspect vessels, and basically be that kind of neutral arbitrator, which is what they're supposed to be. I will argue that while the UN may be neutral here, uh, Turkey is not, and we'll talk about that. So this is the site if you want to go to their updates, their updates from the Joint Coordination Center, and more importantly, these links right here. So right here is the most recent fact sheet, which gives you almost all the information you need. So whenever you keep hearing how many uh, uh, tons of grain coming out, this is their fact sheet right here. They update it daily. So right here, as of 27 August, 1 million metric tons of grain and other foodstuffs were moved uh, from three Ukrainian ports. 60% of the commodities departed from Chormonsk, 21% from Yezneni. I apologize, my Ukrainian is friggin' terrible. And 18% from uh, Odessa. And since 1 August, the JCC has enabled the safe movement of 46 voyages from Ukraine and 57 voyages to Ukraine. It includes here the destinations of the cargo, 21% to Turkey, 13% to Korea, 12% to Iran, 11% to Egypt, 6% to both Germany and Sudan, 5% to the Netherlands, 4% China, Romania, 3% Italy and uh, Ireland, uh, Djibouti, India, Israel, and Lebanon get 2%, and then France and Greece, 1%. And you can see right here graphically how much cargo is being moved. You can also have a list here of the vessel movements, a very detailed report that gives you everything you need here. So if you want to see how much is being moved, when the vessels pass their inspection, what type of, uh, of uh, commodity they're moving, you can see it, the size of vessels, everything associated here with this, uh, where they're coming out of their IMO number. And so you can track them. So you'll see right here a total of 43 vessels have been uh, moving cargo. This brings it up to a total of 978,000 metric tons. Uh, a little bit of a difference there because uh, again, this may not be tracking the exact numbers with the daily report. Uh, and then more importantly, here are the inbound vessels that are coming in. Again, great detail, great information if you want it. Uh, here is the shipping route. So if you're interested in exactly what where the vessels are going. Uh, zoom in here just a bit here so you can see this a little bit better here. You can see the car what they call the caravan. They're not calling them convoys. This is the other thing I found really interesting. Uh, we're not convoying, we're caravanning. So uh, they'll, they'll come to this assembly area right here. Then they come out to a transit area. Uh, then they hit a number of waypoints going in here. And then there's another waiting area here. And then they're basically free once they clear south of basically Snake Island to freely maneuver and transit with another waypoint on the way down there. Uh, fairly standard procedure. Uh, this was used a lot in the Persian Gulf when ships had to transit there. So uh, next, these are the procedures for the ships. Uh, goes in some detail here talking about this. Uh, you can get the full procedures right here. Go ahead and pull this up here for you to take a look at. 
so you can see exactly what the procedures are for the merchant vessels. This is a, a long, detailed 14-page document, and you can take a look at it again. I'll have this linked, of course, in the show notes for you. Uh, some frequently asked questions, which are another element here. Going into detail, and you could pull this up here, and it goes into some more detail about it. And then uh, finally, uh, press releases right here that they have on, on the entire issue, along with all their past press releases and statements so that you can uh, have it listed right there. Uh, pretty good resource here if you want to follow what's exactly happening with Ukraine Grain. Uh, they also have some key photos here that you can take a look at. Uh, I think it's pretty uh, interesting here seeing the loading of the grain uh, boarding of the vessel. Uh, this is an interesting thing. I'm not sure why I took this, but it's from the bridge of one of the ships. But you get an idea here. And this is what a hold in one of these grain ships basically looks like. So the prediction here is, again, we're going to get a million tons out of Ukraine here. And the hope is to be able to get about three million out in September. But again, that is far below the norm that we usually see coming out of Ukraine. Usually what you see coming out of Ukraine is anywhere from five to six million tons of grain coming out. So while grain is coming out and we're seeing a pretty good free movement of grain right now, the issue here is just the volume, just the sheer volume of it. Uh, obviously, Russia takes a big benefit from this deal because while Russia will not hit Ukraine, Ukraine ships, Ukraine won't hit Russian ships. And because the Russians basically lost control of the Gulf, Gulf of Odessa, again, who is the last person to hit ships in that region? It was Ukraine hitting Russian ships. Ukraine now has free movement to move their grain, their food, fertilizer, and fuel out of the Sea of Azov, out of the Eastern Black Sea to the Turkish Straits. They don't have to worry about the Ukrainians hitting them. They were obviously beginning to worry about Ukraine surface-to-surface -surface missiles, their Neptune Harpoon missiles, high Mars, all those all those weapon systems that have been flooding into Ukraine were obviously a big threat to them. So it's gonna be really interesting to watch how this develops. And as this gets more regular and the Ukraine uh, is able to get more ships, one of the things we may see is a reduction in the threat assessment that's leveled from here. The IMO, NATO may lower their threat rankings for this area, and most importantly, the insurance companies may lower the need for war risk insurance in the area. We still have loose mines in the area. Remember, the Ukrainians mined the area pretty heavily, and we've gotten repeated reports of mines breaking loose and getting free. free. It's only going to take one mine to hit one ship to really put this entire system in jeopardy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. As they come out, leave a comment. Give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, contribute to the page. Go ahead and hit that super thanks button below and you can contribute directly to the page. Or at the end of the video, click on Patreon and become a patron on the page. If you become a patron, you can support the page either monthly or yearly and we have different levels. Any support is appreciated. And until our next video, this is Sal signing off.